The following is a selected video from masterthecontent.com where you will find an extensive video library of lectures for a variety of standardized admission tests. We offer over 600 hours of detailed video lectures for a multitude of standardized tests. Use our interactive in-lecture table of contents to find specific topics of interest. Work through numerous in-lecture examples to help you internalize concepts. To learn more, visit masterthecontent.com. Your career, our passion. Use can my pointer example twerk one. What is the magnitude of the tension force on the biceps muscle needed to hold the forearm in a stationary position as shown in figure 4.13? Assume mass of the forearm is 2.3 kilograms and its center of mass is halfway from the elbow. Wonderful. So we are given the mass of the forearm, which is 2.3 kilograms, but we also know that there's going to be there's also going to be a force that's pulling the weight of the uh, the forearm that's going to be pulling the arm down and that the center of mass it's telling us is halfway from the elbow so if the elbow here as we see is 60 centimeters it's going to be 30 centimeters and we'll just designate that right about there so that there's going to be the force of gravity on the forearm on the forearm as such great and that is going to be 30 centimeters we'll say up to there right from the uh, it was telling us from the elbow now the elbow is your pivot point right so that is your pivot point and again just a quick reminder if you have not watched the introduction to torque lecture this lecture does build on that one it was, you're given the fundamentals in that lecture so please pause watch that video and then come back here uh, should you find any of this stuff to be uh, a little bit foreign or you need a little bit more thorough review Great. Now, because this problem, if we go back and we take a look, is telling us it's in a stationary position, we know that for our problem here, it's going to be at rest. There's going to be no acceleration, meaning that it's going to have a net torque of zero and a net force of zero as well, right? And if we go ahead and we write our net torque as net torque as zero, well, how many torques are are in play here right there's going to be two torques there's going to be one there's going to be one that's pulling the which is the force exerted by the biceps muscle uh, pulling the forearm upwards or we can say uh, we can say uh, yeah upwards or counterclockwise and then the second one is going to be from the weight of the arm that's going to be pulling the arm downwards or clockwise now one other point that I would like to make is in the introduction to force lecture, we had mentioned that there, uh, the directionality for, for torque in our lecture is going to be uh, clockwise is going to be positive, counterclockwise is going to be negative, just in case it differs from another resource that you may be using. Okay, great. So we said that we're going to, we talked about the two torques that we have, and just to save some space here, the torque from the bicep, we'll just put a subscript B there, and the torque from the forearm, we'll just put a, put an A there, and that's going to be zero. Wonderful. Now, we can go ahead and write, if you recall, a, we, we uh, discussed what torque was. Torque was just distance R from the pivot point times force sine theta, right? So we can go ahead and write torque as the distance from the pivot point for the force exerted by the biceps muscle, right? The, the force itself, sine theta, right? Plus for the forearm force as well, sine theta, right? Equal to zero. Now, what are we being asked for? Well, we're being asked for the tension force on the on the biceps muscle, right? What's the magnitude? What's the magnitude of the, of the tension force on the biceps muscle? So this is what we need to isolate. So let's go ahead and do that next. And once we do so, we end up getting the following equation here, where we have our um, The force from the forearm right over the distance from the pivot point for the biceps muscle sine theta. Wonderful. 
Now that we have a working equation here, what we can actually do is, because uh, we are a little bit limited for room here, we'll go on to the next slide and we can go ahead and we can solve for the value that we need. Let's go ahead and do that. All right, great. Before we proceed, we'll just go ahead and draw in the 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 force of gravity on the on the forearm here, right? And we said that that was thirty centimeters, just to be safe. Perfect. And here is where we left off, right? Right here, we got our equation up to this point. So let's go ahead now and just fill in our our uh, givens here. Perfect, and we have the uh, the distance for the forearm from the pivot point, and recall the pivot point is just our elbow joint here, right? That's going to be 30 centimeters, and 30 centimeters in meters, we can just write as 3.0 times 10 to the power of negative one meters, and the mass of the forearm, well, that's also given to us there, right? So that is just gonna be 2.3, kilograms and now the little g if we recall that is just 9.8 meters per second squared now here if we see we're not really working with seconds right so is there another way we can actually write the acceleration due to gravity well yes there is and we will do that down here so we just said that our little g is equal to 9.8 meters per second square. And if we recall from Newton's second law, force equals mass times acceleration. Force is in Newtons. Mass is in kilograms, right? And acceleration due to gravity is just uh, meters per second square. Thus, we can then say the Newton kilogram is equal to the meter per second square, right? And then when we go back to our problem up here, we'll just use for these problems, Newton per kilogram, just for simplicity of units. Now, in regards to